Hello everybody and welcome to your next C Sharp X9 platformer tutorial. So in this tutorial we're just going to be putting everything together, putting everything in the right format, etc, etc. It's not going to be hard, it's going to be relatively easy. Uh, so what you want to do is go to your layer.cs and the draw section. Uh, remember in the last tutorial I said that the first um, cell represented the layer number that we're drawing, the second is a column, the third is a row number, right? Uh, but with this case, we're only going to be drawing one layer. So if we wanted to draw all the layers or multiple layers, we wouldn't be able to do that because we're only specifying to draw one layer number. So to counteract that, we're going to make another for loop and we're going to loop till tile map dot count. And replace all instances of layer number with uh, K. Okay, so I replace all of them with K. So with this, it will draw all the layers that we have. Now the reason why I create a layer number, uh, that layer number variable, is that in case you only want to draw one layer or only a certain set of layers, then you could do so with the layer number variable. Let's say, for example, you have some invisible tiles or some tiles that you don't want to become visible until the player actually activates or triggers something, right? Uh, triggers an event or whatever. Then you can do that and then finally show it or whatever you want to do, right? Uh, so you could do that with this. You could do whatever you need to do. But um, this is going to be the way that we draw all the layers um, that we have specified. Okay, so now that we got that done, what we want to do is open up map.cs. Now, in here, we're going to add our using statements, framework, content, graphics, okay? Oh, one thing that we I forgot to do in layer.cs. Quickly, uh, we got to create our own load content. And uh, for update, we don't have anything for update yet, but I'm going to be getting to parallax animation, which I would add in the layer class. So uh, we can make an update later, though. So in the unload content, we'll say this content dot unload. We'll say uh, tile map dot clear layer dot clear tile dot clear. Um, Attributes and contents. And we have file manager dot unload content. Wait, do we? No, so we just have file manager equal to null. Okay, so let's go to our map.cs and let's make our load content. And what we're going to do above here is we're going to make an instance of our layers. Now, there is, for the layer class, there's two methods you can handle the layer class, right? Now, it's up to you. Now, the way I've handled the layer class is that in um, in each instance, in each, uh, instance of layers, we load in all the layers and we draw all the layers at once within this class right here. The alternate method you can use is that you can make the layer class only account for one layer. So only loads in one layer and that's it, right? And then, for example, if you wanted to have, like, say, five layers, you can make an, a layer array of five and so on and so forth or whatever, right? So it's really up to you uh, which method you want to do it, but uh, it doesn't really matter. It ends up getting the same result. So in here, we're going to make a new instance of layers. Uh, we're going to call layer dot load content map ID. And we're going to have unload content layer dot unload. Uh, we'll have update. But we have nothing to put in there for now, so we'll just leave it blank.
and last but not least we have the draw command the draw method and we'll call layers layer dot draw okay so that is the correct format that we should put it in so let's go to our gameplay screen so instead of uh, using layers we're gonna call map and the reason why we put it on the map class because the events are gonna be the map class and so is the collision and stuff so it will handle everything under one class name then rather than having to add layers collision and, and separate event classes so it just makes it easier when one it, it comes time to actually implement it so we're gonna call map equals new map map dot load content map one and we'll be learning about transitioning from one map to the other in the next tutorial so we'll say map dot unload content uh, we'll say map dot update the re we're gonna put map dot update after the player because you might want to update some map elements after the players up um, updated after the players moved or whatever so you want to trigger something after the players moved or trigger event after a player presses the button so on and so forth right um and so same with the camera movement when we add in the camera class is going to come after the player but anyways uh last but not least we need to draw the map before the player now because we don't want the map to overlap the player and once we do that, it should draw it accordingly. Oh, so we got an error. Uh, not really sure what this is. This is in player.cs. Give me a second to find out what this is. Okay, I figured out the problem. Um, you shouldn't have a problem with this, but in my gameplay screen, I accidentally deleted player dot load content. Simple little error. Uh, when we run this, we should get the same result as before. Well, if you created multiple layers, now you should be able to see all your layers. Um, but yeah, here's you. Here, you should see your map on the screen. Uh, so I'm gonna end this tutorial here. Uh, probably the next tutorial is gonna be on transitioning between one map to the next map so i'm just gonna make it that when you press a button uh the new map will uh will show up or whatever or it'll fade out and fade back in or whatever effect you guys want on it you guys can add any animation you want uh so end of this i'm um, ending this tutorial now don't forget to comment rate subscribe hope you enjoyed thanks for watching and bye